This is a model steamboat named Edith and it's part 32, installing the radio control system. And in order to do this, I have to remove the engine and the boiler as well. Well, the boiler could stay where it is, but there's not much room. You can see the mess under the engine, and this is just the water that leaked out of the engine during the steaming that I did the other day. Some of the water in the bottom of the boat leaked out of the hand pump. It's a simple yet clever design. The hand pump sits on top of the water chest, which is really part of the crankshaft driven pump. And I did notice that when the engine was running under its own steam, some water was leaking from around the top of the hand pump. I'll fix that in a while. But first of all, I'm fitting some O-rings to the safety valve. This seals the fitting that carries the steam up the pipe and up the chimney. It seems like a good idea before I permanently fit the engine into the boat to just make sure that the pump ram glands are all okay. This is the gland that seals the ram that's driven by the crankshaft. And after I tighten the gland, I make sure that the engine still runs freely. It's very important when adjusting glands not to over tighten the bolts because then you will get quite a lot of friction and that will actually wear the ram, which in turn over time will start to leak. So the general idea is just nip up the bolts to take up the slack and then just back them off slightly so the gland isn't too tight. There's also a gland on top of the hand pump tube. I'm going to adjust this and hopefully this should stop the leaks. But when I start adjusting it, the hand pump ram doesn't feel very good, it feels a bit notchy, so I think I have a better idea. I persevered for a while, adjusting the ram very, very carefully, putting equal pressure on each of the bolts, but it still didn't feel good, it started to tighten up. I was applying the same technique, I tightened up the three bolts and then backed them off, but the ram didn't feel good. So here's the solution. With the ram fitted into the forge yourself centering chuck on my smart and brown lathe, using a very small parting tool, I started to turn a groove in the end of it. And once I turned the groove, I widened the groove because I didn't want the o-ring to be a tight fit in this groove. There's a wealth of information available online about the depth of grooves in pieces of metal bar to take o-rings, but I just did it by eye. As long as the o-ring floats slightly in this groove, it will be okay. In this clip, I'm just using a piece of emery cloth to remove the sharp edges. And now I'm very carefully refitting the ram into the tube. Because of the cutout in the tube for this bayonet fitting, I carefully used the blunt screwdriver to persuade the o-ring to go into the tube and not stick out over the edge of the cutout. And then I just slackened off the gland slightly. So the gland is still going to be functional, but it's not needed because I don't think any water is going to pass the o-ring. There does need to be some resistance of the ram in the tube, and I can feel that there is, so everything should be okay now as far as the engine's concerned, and it's time to get on with fitting the radio control system. What I have to do is solder these fittings onto the end of a piece of wire. This is just soft solder. Silver solder is unnecessary. I've used this type of fitting over many years for radio controlled aircraft, and I've never once had one come apart. The secret is plenty of heat in the right place and quite a lot of flux and make sure that the solder flows properly and attaches the fitting firmly to the rod. As I've mentioned previously, this is not a computer controlled radio set. So in this case, I have to take very great care to make sure that the clevis fits into the correct hole in the servo arm and that way the rod will travel the correct distance. And as you saw in the previous clip, the gas valve is working fine with the correct amount of travel. And now it's time to repeat the process, and this time I'm going to solder another one of these fittings onto the piece of wire, and this will operate the regulator. I'm using a small Chinese blowtorch for this, and it's okay for what it is. It generates more than enough heat to do this job. In fact, I'm being very careful not to get the part too hot. I could silver solder this component, but it really is not necessary, and it's not a good idea to overheat the wire. I once did silver solder one of these fittings onto a piece of piano wire, but it became very brittle and broke easily. And that's why I stick to soft solder, it's more than strong enough in this application for whatever you want it to do. But having said that, you need to make sure that you have a really good joint. It's no good if the solder does not flow, the part will look like it's stuck to the wire, but it's likely to come off in service. And here's the finished linkage for the regulator. Fitting the radio box under the stern decking really taxed my patience. I had to do the job two or three times and keep trying it in place until I managed to get the travel to be just perfect. 
The regulator servo needed reversing, and this is done by flicking a switch in the back of the transmitter, which was very simple. And there we have it, the radio control system is fitted and working. The engine's not in place yet, so when I move the regulator you'll see that the engine moves about, but very shortly I will be bolting the engine in place. The regulator works fine, the engine speeds up and slows down. And when I throw the switch on the transmitter, the gas cutoff valve cuts off the gas, not forgetting the rudder that works very well indeed. To finish the job, I need to bolt the engine in place, fit the boiler, and bolt that in place. And I need to make sure that all the unions are fully tight on the water system, the gas system, and the steam system. Then I will float the boat in the bath that's sitting on my lawn, and I will ballast the boat to take it down to the water line. Then I'll steam it and see how it goes. And all being well, next month we should be sailing the boat on a large lake. And I'm really looking forward to that, it's been quite a job this one. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.